Welcome in to the Warchant.com Top 40 Countdown. We must be getting to the big wigs, boys, because it's number 20 that we start at. We don't do video prior to 20. So now here we go. We're getting into the guys, the meat and potatoes, if you will, where we all get excited about the names revealed here in rare moments. The big reveal. The big reveal. Listen, I think the precursor to all of us sitting here today to do this video was an awful lot of talk between Corey and Ira and myself about this year's list was a little bit difficult. It was a little bit difficult for us to kind of get through. And that's not a knock on these kids, ladies and gentlemen. That's not a knock on what we've got coming out here this fall. It's just that obviously Florida State has seen deeper, more talented teams. So this list was a bit more arduous to put together. But I do have some excitement surrounding some of these guys. So let's start with the first one. Stephen Dix Jr., a linebacker that they're going to need to play well. He comes in at number 20 on our list here. It should be noted there wasn't great variance for the three of us, anyhow, on these particular players 20 through 11. We're all right there. It's nothing crazy, nothing egregious where somebody didn't even have them ranked or somebody had them at number two or anything like that. We're in the general ballpark here. But Florida State's got real concerns at linebacker. They could help be alleviated just a little bit if Stephen Dix Jr. plays well. That's an if, though, right? Pretty big one. Uh, look, there, there's a chance he could be good. I mean, he was just a true freshman last year, and it's hard to be – when you imagine how bad that defense was and all the things that going on on that defense, to be thrown into the mix as a true freshman to play that position, well, there's a reason he struggled like he did mightily at times. But a lot of true freshmen, maybe every true freshman in the country that plays that position was that was thrown into that position would at Florida State would have struggled. So it's way too early to give up on Stephen Dix. He's just still a redshirt freshman. It's just that he played a lot of football, so he, it's, easy, it's kind of easy to make up your mind like, okay, maybe he's just not that good. But most true freshmen would have struggled in, that, uh, in the situation he was in last year. Yeah, really the only thing he had going for him was he, he was an early enrollee, so he did get uh, a little bit of the meetings in the spring, but then that got shut down. So he didn't even get the full spring because of COVID. Uh, and then, you know, all the players got sent home. He's, he's one of those guys that, you know, when you talk to people around the program, not only – you can see it physically. When you look at him physically, he's obviously looks the part of a Florida State linebacker. Uh, but apparently, you know, great work ethic, great, uh, very conscientious, a guy that everybody likes and is pulling for. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is the right now. He would be a redshirt freshman. Um, so yeah, I mean, he's really young. There's no, there's no uh, reason to to assume that we've seen the best of him. But he definitely has to improve a lot because you know last year he struggled. I mean, he got exploited in several games. And, uh, you know, this, could, this is going to be a good opportunity for him to show. So I think 20 is about right. I think I had him a little bit lower than that. Some of you guys had him a little higher or lower, but, but I think 20 is about right. Well, I think in fairness to Stephen Dix Jr., you guys just did a great job of pointing this out. He, he, in a normal situation, if you had the kind of depth of talent that you really look to have at a Florida State, he would have never have been asked to play, maybe aside from special teams. He would not have been a guy that they were relying on to make plays on Saturdays in big-time college football in the Power Five. And then you throw in COVID. It was really a nothing year and a difficult year for everybody, but especially those just arriving, trying to get acclimated uh, and figure out what they're doing. So you can see him along with a lot of the other young guys take huge strides where they have a normal offseason. They're able to work out together. They have more time uh, to buy in, to figure out what Florida State's doing schematically all of those things. I know Florida State fans, obviously, we have to hope that Stephen Dix Jr. has a big step forward this year. Let's look at number 19, Ontario Wilson. Pokey Wilson, guys, is a guy that everybody knows. It seems like he's been here forever. I actually do have pretty high hopes for him, partly because I think Mackenzie Milton is going to be the quarterback. And I think getting the ball out on time, having a guy that throws in rhythm could help him and all the receivers for that matter. Ira, I'll start with you. Let's talk uh, about Ontario Wilson. Yeah, I had him a little bit higher. I had had him at 15, and uh, I do think he could have an, a good year. Now, you, again, the numbers haven't been great, but look at the quarterbacks he's played with. I mean, I, how many receivers that we think of through the years at Florida State who've had tremendous careers had to play with the quarterbacks that this guy's had to play with? And and you know, Jordan Travis, you know, was a quarterback for a lot of last year, but he you know he was brand new. Uh, to that system. He obviously wasn't ready as a passer. Before that, it was mostly James Blackman, Alex Hornibrook. I mean, it's just a, it's, you know, he was not getting the passes uh, in the places and on time that you'd like to see. So the potential really could be there for him, him to have a much better season. I don't know that he's a, you know, a, a you know, first, second day NFL guy, but I definitely think he's a guy that can be a, a you know, a one or two receiver in college football, have 60, 70 receptions and, uh, you know, be much better than we've seen so far. 
Yeah, I think it's all about the quarterback. Get get him. I bring this up all the time, and I'll keep bringing it up until the season's over. Uh, Kenny Shaw was an afterthought on the on the Florida State roster until he got a good a great quarterback throwing him the football, and then he was almost a thousand yard receiver and a national champion. So things, I'm not saying he's Kenny Shaw, but that's the impact that a good quarterback can make. You know, I I think we cannot un- underestimate that for every receiver that we talk about. And and this is a group that has to shine and has to prove something. They don't have a lot in the way of depth or experience, uh, talent that have made plays on Saturdays. But quarterback play, Corey, that's why I brought it up as well. I think a guy that throws on time, understands this offense, and, and throws guys open into tight windows as well uh, can make all these guys look a lot better. Cam McDonald's a tight end. He comes in next on our list at 18. We know Mike Norvell loves the tight end, the three back, as they call him. They don't have a lot of talent there. They need Jordan Wilson to come back and be good this year. He obviously was hurt all last year. They've got to find something. Maybe Jackson West becomes a guy. But uh, obviously Cam's a good athlete. He looks the part, uh, made some plays. So perhaps uh, we'll see a big step up for him this year as well. Sure. Let's hope. <laughs> hey, we what? can't do three-minute soliloquy on, on all these guys. This is going to be a 45-minute video. So I, I'm trying to keep it brief. That's what I'm I like, doing. That's my job. I like, that for, I like that six minutes and 30 seconds into this top 20, 20 to 11 countdown, Corey's frustrated and wants to lead. That was, uh, <laughs> that's, that was, tech, that's what Corey's bringing. I'm, I'm going to be brief. I'm going to be the brief one on the panel. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. let, me just, let me say one thing on the last guy. I'm going to slow it down a little bit, Corey. Uh, the one thing when you, when you, when we were all talking about how much better their Ontario Wilson's going to be with better quarterback play, the one thing I would say if you're watching this at home is, are we sure they're going to have better quarterback play this year? And I, th- I do think they are. I mean, whether it's Mackenzie Melton or Jordan Travis, I think they're going to get better quarterback play than we've seen the last three. I think we all would agree with that. Um, as far as Cam McDonald goes, the, I think some people might think he would be higher on this list because, you know, he did catch uh, 25, 30 passes last year. He's coming back. He's in his fourth year. Uh, you know, he looks the part. But And we know how much, as you said, Mike Norvell likes his tight ends. The, the question is, he hasn't been consistent enough. I mean, he's had some great catches, and then he's had some games or moments where he's disappeared. So that's going to be the real challenge. I think Cam McDonald has the talent to be in the top 10 of this list. I just don't think we've seen the consistency. Well, and I'll talk for Corey because he doesn't want to. Better quarterback play, more consistent quarterback play will help the tight ends as well. So we go to uh, a defensive back next because I think really on all of our lists, we had a ton of defensive backs. We all kind of felt like that's where the talent on this team lies. They still have to prove an awful lot. Let's go to Jarvis Brownlee. Corey, I'll start with you. You can get out of the way quick, buddy. Yeah. No, I like Jarvis Brownlee, man. He's one of the oh, few okay. guys on that on that defense. Not that I didn't like Cam McDonald, by the way. I, I mean, it sounds like I just didn't want to talk about him. Um, no, I, I like Jarvis Brownlee. He he had that, as Jeff likes to say, that a little what he showed a lot of what for last year on a very bad defense. He competed. Um, I think he's I think he probably played the best other than Asante Samuel in the secondary, especially at the end of the year. I just appreciated the competitiveness. You know, he's got some skills. He's got some ability, sure. But if you have the competitiveness, and there's a lot of green sprinkled in in those final three games, if if uh, if you have competitiveness, you can build everything else. And he really seems to have, like I like to say, because I'm from Jimmy Carter Boulevard, he's got a little dog in him. He's got a little dog in him. And I like to see that out of my out of my DBs. He's, I wrote, he, Corey and I both think he has some what for. What do you call it? Well, he's from the 305. So, I mean, <laughs> Corey's going to try to equate it to Atlanta somehow. Mm-hmm, but he's from mm-hmm. the 305. Give the respect to, to Miami-Dade County. Um, yeah, and I like him a lot. And, and in the spring, I thought there were times in, in the spring where he was as good as – he played as dominant a corner as we've seen in a long time uh, in spring practice. I mean, he was really good. Lockdown defenders, lockdown receivers, very physical. Uh, and he's And he's a guy that – you know, to your guys' point, I mean, he wants to be great. Some guys play college football because they're good at it. Some guys play college football because they think it's going to make them money. He's a guy that looks like he just lives for college, for football, and he wants to be great, and uh, I think you're going to see him make a jump this year. We all uh, – yeah, good point, Ira. We all thought he played extraordinarily well in the spring. All right, so these next three guys I'll group together, 16, 15, and 14 in the interest of time, but they're all guys uh, that obviously we can say something about here and in, in, in Florida State more than – more importantly needs to needs them to play well. Jerry and Jones, another defensive back. Robert Scott, Scott offensive line. Fabian Lovett. Fabian Lovett, everybody knows. Let's talk about who of those guys stand out to you. Who are you looking forward to uh, seeing them play the most and, and, and really think that have the best opportunity to impact this team in a positive way and get Florida State to a better place? I'll start. 
Uh, I'll go, go with a, I'll go with a Fabian Lovett. Um, the way that Norvell talked about him in the spring, you know, he had a he had a he just wasn't really all that impressive or impactful in, in his first year at Florida State. But I, it's hard to judge anybody with what was going on in that defense and even that defensive line. But apparently, he looked the part, according to Norvell. I mean, we saw some of it too. He he yeah. looked much better in the spring, um, and and Norvell was just seemed really really happy with the way he played. And if you can get that guy in the middle with some of these other transfers, if he plays well and holds it down with Cooper, and then you got Keir Thomas and Jermaine Johnson and guys like that, you're starting to feel pretty good about things. So Fabian Lovett, I think, has a chance to be a real impact player if he plays up to the level that Norvell seems to think he can. Yeah, he definitely – I mean, he's a guy that – he would be my pick as well. He definitely – you know, he one of the things he said in the spring was that he didn't really get comfortable – in the defense last year until kind of late in the season. He wasn't playing exactly the same position he played at Mississippi State. He, uh, it's a new scheme, new things asked of him. Uh, but but this spring, you could tell it wasn't just what the coaches said. And a lot of those – we made a big deal in a couple of those scrimmages about all the goal line stops and short yardage stops. Fabian Lovett was at the bottom of a lot of those piles. And he's – I mean, he looked like he was in great shape in the spring. If he has the offseason, the summer – that he had leading up to spring practice, yeah, man, I think he's he's he could he's another guy that could end up in the top ten of this list if we re rank him at the end of the season. Well, and I would make a case for any of the defensive players we talk about as not being comfortable last year. Ira, th- th- this defense was the worst defense in football, or arguably the worst defense in football. I don't know that anybody felt comfortable anywhere doing anything on this defense. It was an embarrassment to football, but that's partly due to the fact that you had a first year staff not really able to coach them up. They didn't have a spring. They were trying to teach a defense on Zoom meetings. So I think, you, you know, the season played out in, in such a way that that was evident. I think all those guys on the defense that showed anything have a chance to make huge strides. And Lord knows Florida State's going to need him to. Uh, from there, Jay Sean Corbin, who really turned it on late in the year, by the way. I, I like his consistency. He's physical. We know he can run the football. He's part of a backfield that I think people are excited about between he and Toa Feely. So I think that's an obvious pick there at 13. Big Coop, everybody knows about. And then Travis Jay at 11, who I really want to talk about because I think he's about to be a breakout star for this Florida State football team. He's arguably the best athlete on the team. He's a guy who played hurt last year. He's a guy that, if he's right, bought in has the sort of athletic prowess that could be a game changer for Florida State. We don't have many guys. Florida State doesn't have many guys like that that you can circle and say, if he's bought in, if he gets it, if he's healthy, he's a big-time superstar player in the Power Five. I just feel bad for Robert Scott. Like, we spent five minutes talking about Stephen Dix, and yet my man's five spots higher than him, and we just fly by him. I know, Robert, you're watching this and you're wondering what happened. Just know that we expect a lot of good things out of you. I feel Understand bad. That. I still feel bad for Cam McDonald. You, you publicly <laughs> shame him on, yeah. on, on the internet here. Well, sorry, part, of the sorry, reason folks, that we, part of the reason we had to expedite the process was Corey's disdain for this entire exercise. So <laughs> I wanted to make sure we got to everybody. That is, it, that is incorrect. Uh, yeah, it. no, Corbin. Corbin's another guy, man. Like I, you, you guys can talk about Jay. I want to talk about Corbin. Like You mentioned at the end of the year – it looked like the first half of the season. Okay, give it to him on third and one. That's all he's, he can be a bulldozer and get you, which is a good luxury to have. You have a guy that's good on short yardage that can get you a first down. But late in the year, he showed you the wiggle and the burst that had been missing, I thought, at the beginning of the year. And you're like, okay. I still think Toa Feely. I still think I'd like, I like him more than Corbin. But Corbin is a, a guy that does more than just, you know, crumbles to the ground in three yards. He can get, he can maybe get you some big plays. I, I, I was really impressed with him uh, the final two or three games he played as if just looking forward, like, okay, that's something that can be worked with. He can do some things other than just uh, get you four yards on third and two. Yeah. yeah and I he think he's finally healthy. Yeah. That's what I was going to yeah. say. Well, and confident. I mean, his hamstring was fixed, but it took him a while to feel comfortable and feel confident you know, running wide open with a hamstring that apparently was almost torn off the bone uh, when he was at Texas A&M. So it was a huge industry, huge industry injury to come back from. But as far as Travis Jay goes, yeah, I feel like I may have made a mistake. I, I kind of jumped off the Travis Jay bandwagon a little bit because of what we saw last year. I think if you go back to a year ago, I probably had him overranked. I thought they were going to get really, really good things out of Travis Jay as a freshman. Um, and it didn't really materialize. But but thinking back to the spring, one of the things that Adam Fuller said was that they really probably were unfair to Travis because they asked him to play basically three different positions. Um, you know, they they were had him at corner for a while, then they moved into both safety spots. 
Um, they may have had him at nickel as well. And I just think they, they looking back, they felt like they may have overwhelmed him a little bit, but we just didn't see, except for that one dynamic interception he had late in the year with the leaping catch. We didn't see the athleticism we expected to see. He seemed a lot more passive, but that could have been, you know, that paralysis by analysis. And if he knows what he's doing and they limit his role to maybe one safety position this fall, uh, maybe we'll see that again. So yeah, I had him a little lower than, than where he ended up. But I, I think I may uh, regret that decision. I think he's going to be a, a breakout star for Florida State this year. He'd be my guy to circle and say, that's the guy that's going to look like an entirely different player than we've seen up to this point. Don't forget to hit the like button below, everybody. That's 20 through 11. Now we break into the top 10. We'll get to it next time when we count them down here on WarChant.com.